Paris, and it took its toll. Sanchez Vicari, as you can see, made her work very hard, but she hung tough, something that she said she may not have done in the past. But the really big question is, will she be ready to play after yesterday's marathon? She thinks she will be. Yeah, sure. I hope uh, to get better. Yeah, hope to be in good shape tomorrow, and I'm looking forward to the match. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm playing very good tennis, and I hope to do well tomorrow. This is the trophy that's at stake here at Amelia Island as the number two and three players in the world take the court for the championship match at the Bausch and Long. This is the Bausch and Lomb Championships from Amelia Island Plantation in Florida. In today's final, Steffi Graf will take on Gabriella Sabatini. Sabatini is now the number three player in the world. She overtook Martina Navratilova in the rankings just this week. That's Graf now entering the stadium first, and then Sabatini behind her as they will get ready for their warm-ups for this final championship and a first prize of $70,000. A very friendly hello to you, everybody. It is, a, of course, a, a dream for any promoter to have the two top seeds in the final, and that's what's happened here. Steffi Graf and Sabatini both, of course, vying for the number one spot in the world now held by Monica Sellers. For Steffi Graf this week, it has been a relatively easy, as Fred Solly would say, day or week anyway at the office. She had a bye in the first round because she was a seeded player here. Then against Renee Simpson Alter in the second round, she won that match relatively easily. Isabel Cueto of Germany, Natalia Sverova of the Soviet Soviet Union, and then in the semi-final, Paddy Fendick of the USA. For Gabriella Sabatini, of course, she also got a bye in the first round, and then she beat Federica Bonsignore in the second round, Luanne Spadia, 18-year-old from Boca Raton. In the quarterfinal, Helena Sukova, and then Arancha Sanchez Vicario in a very tough semi-final match. With me again, of course, Mary Carrillo. Welcome to you, Mary. For Sabatini uh, against Steffi Graf, it has been just lately all one way, and it's all been her way. Yeah, it really has. The, uh, finally, we've got the rivalry that we were all hoping for years ago between Steffi Graf and Gabriela Sabatini. She beat Graf at the finals of the, at, in the Virginia Sims Championships mm -hmm. last November, and she's won the three times they've already played in 1991. I really think she's developing something of a mental edge over Graf, because look at this. In this state, Graf has never lost to anyone in the last three years, except Sabatini, whom she hasn't been able to beat in five tries. So this is going to be a very, very important test for Graf today. The big question uh, for Sabatini, though, is, is what kind of conditions she's going to be in today. Mary, she played a very tough match yesterday, and coming into the tournament, she had a virus. She did not look like, I mean, she wasn't in that great a shape. No, she was in real trouble against yeah. Arancha Sanchez Vicario yesterday. At 3-2 to the third, I didn't think she could really pull it out. She's been very dehydrated, but uh, her coach, Carlos Kiermaier, was telling me just before that, you know, he thinks she'll be fine, and if she can stay tough mentally, she can win this match. Now, how about Steffi Graf? She's playing better, of course. It hasn't been a good year for her compared to last year when she hadn't lost a match going into this tournament, Mary, but uh, she did win her last outing. That is a very big deal because she was finally able to stop the drought. She had gone five months without winning a tournament, and then two weeks ago in San Antonio, she, she won the U.S. Women's Hard Courts, and not only did she win it, but she beat the number one player in the world. So at least coming into this match against Sabatini, you know, it's not like when she played her a few weeks ago at Lipton when, you know, she was going in there, she was unsure of herself, and she hadn't beaten Sabatini. Now, at least, she's got a title under her belt. She's beaten the number one player in the world. So I think she should have more confidence, and it should show. What has changed for Steffi Graf now, Mary, in addition to other things, is that there's a book on her now that the other players have. For more on that, we asked uh, Pam Shriver yesterday to take a look at that book, and then she has a suggestion. The book on Steffi Graf is to attack the backhand side of the court as much as possible. And there are two things that can happen. When Steffi's in control, she runs around and hits her big forehand. When she's not in control and her opponent hits too good an approach shot, she's stuck with hitting a backhand pass up the line. Now there's a third option that Steffi doesn't think of that might be useful. When you see your opponent's gonna hit the backhand approach with the open face, you sneak in, play it in the air, up the line, hit a volley, surprise him for a winner. She ought to try it. 
<laughs> Interesting idea, Mary. Whether she can do that or not, can she win this match today? Can she turn it around after four straight losses? I think she has to. I mean, that's really how I feel about this. The French Open isn't too far away. She doesn't want to go into a Grand Slam with, with such a, a mental problem against a player. I, I honestly feel Sabatini's the better player all around, but she is a little bit under the weather. Groff really wants it badly, and she's hungry, so I give a very slight edge to Groff. Again, I think it all depends on the conditioning, as I think you do as well, but if she's in reasonable shape, I think the Gabriella Sabatini will win today. This is the final of the Bausch & Lomb Championship from Amelia Island, and our coverage today is being brought to you by Bausch & Lomb, healthcare and optics worldwide. And by Michelob Dry Beer, once you experience the bold taste with no aftertaste, there's no going back. Final of the women's singles, best of three sets here on Amelia Island. Steffi Graf will take on Gabriella Sabatini in a very meaningful match for both players. In a moment. Few things are more precious. Beautiful day here, another beautiful day on the Amelia Island plantation, which is not far from Jacksonville, Florida. 85 degree temperature. 80% humidity, which was a factor yesterday and may be again as far as Gabriella Sabatini is concerned anyway. The winds, as you can see, are 12, and 12 to 20 miles per hour, but they're not going to be a factor because this stadium court is very well protected. It's sunny. It's going to stay that way. And the surface is hard true, which is relatively slow. Uh, clay style court 110 as you can see which uh, which uh, is more than just a little warm and of course that's a court side really right down on the court and remember this that uh, with the stadium as it is enclosed at the humidity and the heat it kind of tends to gather down there Steffi Graf is from Brühl West Germany she's 21 years old she has already won a grand slam a lot of folks, including myself, thought she would have, by this time, already have won a second Grand Slam, but that has not happened. Well, uh, last year, obviously, uh, it was well chronicled, well chronicled that she had all kinds of problems on and off the court, but she's actually playing very, very well uh, in the last couple of weeks. In fact, in the last couple of matches, she's had twice as many winners as unforced errors. She seems to be using patience and selectivity without sacrificing the big game that she has decided she is going to stick with. I mean, she's decided in the last few weeks that she is going to go back to her native strengths, her big forehand, her big serve, you know, her high-risk game. And though everybody, including this woman, has been trying to attack the backhand and has done it successfully, Graf has decided now that she will not change her backhand. She's going she's gonna, to... She's going to die with her boots on if, that, if that's what has to happen. Sabatini born in Buenos Aires, and that's where she still lives most of the time. She also spends a lot of time in Key Biscayne, depending on how much time she has to get back all the way down to Buenos Aires between trips on the tour. Head-to-head -to -head between these two has been interesting. It started out, it was all Steffi Graf. But the last meeting was the Lipton this year. Sabatini won that after losing the first set 6-love, came back and won the second set in the tiebreak, and then the third set easily 6-1. It looked at that stage like there was no way, in my opinion anyway, that Sabatini could lose to Graf if she was in good condition. And frankly, that's how I feel the outcome of this match will be. But it really depends on Gabriella Sabatini and her conditioning. She played a very rough match yesterday. I hope you had a chance to see it alongside us. By the way, uh, perhaps it's just a, a show of nerves. Maybe it's not that, but Groff already changed rackets can, twice in the, in the warm-up. Gabriella Sabatini to serve. So you just wonder if, uh, if she's a little Play. unsure of herself or trying to find a racket with a little more magic in it than the others. I think it's uh, the former of those two, Mary. I think she's a little nervous, a little tight. Understandable. <laughs> Tom Cook is in charge of proceedings for this afternoon. He's from Sarasota. Best of three set final. $70,000 at stake here. Sabatini, now the number three player. I spoke to Carlos Kilmer about an hour or so before the match, and Carlos said that Gabriela Sabatini had a good warm-up today, a little shorter than usual, but she missed very few balls, and he felt that physically she'd be really pretty good for this match.
he's right, that's the key right there. Being in shape for it. Well, days like today, you really don't need too long a warm-up. Usually, uh, Gabby would maybe hit about an hour. Maybe today she did closer to a half hour. And usually what Steffi likes to do is come out early in the day, hit for about 45 minutes, and then come back out on the court within a half hour of the match and get a little warmed up. first game. We've been coming down here to Amelia Island now for years, of course, ESPN. Take a look at this. this is, of course, uh, Groff, in an effort to run around her backhand, trying to go for her big forehands. We're going to see a lot of that today. Groff has been so effective at breaking serve all week long. In fact, her opponents have just held seven times in the four matches she's played this week. <gasps> Sabatini's been breaking just as easily. Serve is a key to this match. One of them. So is the return, of course. And the break is served. The first blood goes to Steffi Groff. One game to love, first set. And her foot speed, which gets her, uh, which, which makes her able to run around her backhand side, and her big serve, which we're about to see. The weaknesses, of course, are that she does have limited tactics. And she does have an attackable backhand. One of the reasons I feel that, you know, Sab everyone's thinking Sabatini needs a short match to try to beat her in straights, but I disagree with that. When you say, when I say limited tactics, I mean that Groff has a, she's got a very high risk game and she counts on it to win for her. That she hits more winners than errors. She doesn't go to the net, she doesn't mix it up. Sabatini likes a long match because that forces her opponent to hit more, try to hit more winners. Sabatini has added so much to her game in the last half year. The variety of strokes, uh, improved confidence, surely, from all the great wins she's had and all the good tennis she's played and all the, the new aggression in her game. Again, the fitness level is a question. We don't know how weak she is, and she does have an attackable serve, which has already been broken. 15 all in the second game of the match. There it is. And that's wide. She wins the point. Groff had the court to herself but it and was missed a, the volley. It was a delayed call. I'm not sure if there. Groff knows it was wide, Pam. No. Steffi at this point thinks her shot was good and the linesman checked the mark. Yeah, it was clearly wide. Look at this. Fifteen thirty. She just, she, you can see, she was moving a little bit. She had an easy forehand volley. Just had to pop it into the court and missed it wide. Well, when the 
Sabbath tweening does come at you, the, the net person really has to concentrate even harder because it's an awkward shot to follow, but also the crowd starts to scream and get into it because they're so excited to see such an unusual shot. And also, you just hate the idea of someone beating you with a shot like that, so you <laughs> ch choke a little, basically. <laughs> there you go. Double four, the first for Graf, her first serve game, of course, break point for Sabatini, she's been broken already. The sun is behind Graf, so that wasn't a, a player. Oh, came right back with an ace. Her first, back to Deuce. And she's always had that out wide serve to the ad side better than any other right-hander. Of course, that's the lefty's favorite serve, but it's not that common to see such a strong righty angle. Turn a serve off the second serve down the line. Clean winner, this one. And she's trying to, she's been striking the ball flatter as well, so it really penetrates. And that's helped her win points easier. Deuce. It's also going to help her get into Graf's backhand side, which is going to hurt Graf ultimately in this match, I think. With Graf's new attitude of dancing with who brought her to this party. She's going to try to uh, hit as many forehands as possible, but that may not work against Sabatini today. And it also places so much pressure on your big shot. You know, it's going to it's going to make her uh, her forehand so terribly important to her. break point of this game. Well, Steffi could have gotten to that lob, but she thought for sure it was going to land over the baseline. She had plenty of time. It was a great defensive Avenged lob Sabatini. from Sabatini, and as you can see, it just cleans the baseline there. Surprised Graf. Sabatini, she breaks back. First game on Graf's serve. It's one all in the first set now. It's interesting that she's been beaten. Graf has been beaten twice off that cross-court backhand. She's got to expect that uh, in the main, Sabatini's going to go that side, but twice she was not looking for it. The last 10 games, including the one that you just saw in the whole tournament. was a crucial game that one for Graf actually early stages of this match if she could have got out to a lead could be that Sabatini will now really impose herself on the match That 
slot. More breaks were served yesterday in the match with Sanchez Vicario in the second semi final than there were holes. Pavel Slozel is Steffi's coach from Czechoslovakia. Fine doubles player in his time, along with Thomas Schmidt. What's interesting about the Groff box is today uh, there's no sign of Peter Groff. I'm sure he's somewhere watching, but we don't know where. There's the empty chair that's waiting for him. There's Heidi Groff in the sunglasses and Steffi's mom. all the celebrated misfortune and controversy of last year in Peter Graf, there is still some tension in the Graf camp. Things haven't settled down entirely yet in her life. That's three breaks in a row. Two games to one. Steffi Graf leads in the first set. We'll be back. Business travels is in the middle of your screen. Osvaldo is next to him on the right of your screen, and then Stormman Norman Salik on the left of your screen. He works for Bosch and along. Behind Stormman Norman is uh, Gabby's mom, Beatrice, and right next to her is her aunt. That's uh, Beatrice's sister, Rosita. Two games to one, Graf with a break, first set. First, uh, to congratulate Gabriela Sabatini when she won the U.S. Open this year. It's been all uphill for her since then. She lost a five-set final to Monica Sellers at the Virginia Slims. Finals at Madison Square Garden. But this year she's only lost two matches to Sanchez Vicario in Australia. There's a record 28 and 2 this year. <laughs> and the other one was, of course, to sell us in the final at the Lipton. interesting is that the turning point of Gabriela Sabatini's year really happened the tournament after the Australian Open in Tokyo, where in a first round match she was losing to Rachel McQuillan of Australia. 7 6, 5 4, 30 love. McQuillan serve, and she had a forehand volley for three match points, missed the shot. Sabatini came back and won the match and the tournament. why that was definitely the turning point was because Gabby was so down after losing to Sanchez Vicario easily in the quarterfinals of the Australian Open and had she lost two matches in a row it would have been disaster instead she ends up beating Groff, Mary Jo Fernandez and Martina three in a row to win the tournament only lost once since
and she had beaten Rachel McQuillan at Flinders Park in Australia. Easily. S Sabatini, she just kept trying to, she just kept punching away at Grob till she got a short one. And she had to decide how she was going to play this. And had plenty of open court, so it wasn't a, a tough ball at all. Break point for a fourth break in a row. That's something. I mean, Steffi Grob came into this match having only lost serve twice.